You're watching footage of Lebanese journalist Fadi Badua getting hit by an IDF bomb while conducting a live broadcast. Biden is essentially calling for a broader regional war in the Middle East. Lebanon is not their main target, guys. Iran is. And but Iran is a giant war. Israel cannot fight by itself. That's why they make they want us to do it. And conveniently, our corrupt politicians have brought a giant part of our fleet right next to Iran. Tonight, in one of the heaviest bombardments since October 8th, Hezbollah missiles striking northern Israel. More than 100 rockets fired, many of them intercepted, exploding in the sky above. And overnight, Israel carrying out hundreds of strikes inside Lebanon, hitting this building that allegedly belongs to Hezbollah. The Lebanon-based group today saying they are entering, quote, an open-ended battle of reckoning. As we feared, all-out war has broken out in the Middle East as Israel bombards Lebanon with airstrikes and Hezbollah returns fire with hundreds of rockets. The overwhelming amount of damage has no doubt been seen in Lebanon. The Israeli mil military says its forces struck more than 300 targets inside Lebanon, and the death toll keeps going up. Lebanon's health ministry has raised the death toll to 492, including 35 children, as well as 1,645 1, people injured in the Israeli attacks. That makes today Lebanon's deadliest day of conflict since 2006. The health minister said convoys of vehicles evacuating people from the areas under fire had been targeted, as had two ambulances, a fire truck, and a medical center. Two first responders were killed, he added, and thousands of families have been displaced from targeted areas. On Friday, an airstrike over Beirut also killed at least 50 people, including both Hezbollah fighters and civilians, including children. In a televised speech today, Netanyahu claimed Israel's war is not against civilians. Take a look. I have a message for the people of Lebanon. Israel's war is not with you. It's with Hezbollah. For too long, Hezbollah has been using you as human shields. It placed rockets in your living rooms and missiles in your garage. Those rockets and missiles are aimed directly at our cities, directly at our citizens. To defend our people against Hezbollah strikes, we must take out those weapons. Now, starting this morning, the IDF has warned you to get out of harm's way. I urge you, take this warning seriously. Don't let Hezbollah endanger your lives and the lives of your loved ones. Don't let Hezbollah endanger Lebanon. Please get out of harm's way now. Once our operation is finished, you can come back safely to your homes. He also told Israelis to expect complicated days. Over the weekend, as tensions were heating up, Axios reported an incredible tidbit about Israel's alleged, alleged strategy here. Israeli officials said their increasing attacks against Hezbollah are not intended to lead to war, but are an attempt to reach de-escalation through escalation. They allegedly believe putting more pressure on Hezbollah could push them to agree to a diplomatic deal, and that would return citizens to northern Israel and southern Lebanon. U.S. officials told Axios they recognize Israel's rationale and agree with it. But stress, this is an extremely difficult calibration that could easily go out of control and lead to an all-out war. Yes, it seems like those fears have unsurprisingly already come to fruition. Hezbollah's leadership said in a statement Monday it was targeting dozens of rockets at an Israeli military post in northern Israel. Residents in the city of Nazareth told NPR it was a scary night into early Monday morning with rockets and interceptions over us all night. At least two Israelis have been injured, according to paramedics. Meanwhile, the U.S. says they're doing everything they can to avoid a broader war, but their actions would, of course, suggest otherwise. It was announced today that the U.S. is sending additional troops to the Middle East in response to the escalation of violence between Israel and Hezbollah. The Pentagon wouldn't say how many more forces were being sent, but we already have 40,000 troops in the region. Now, Jank, de-escalation through escalation, does that make sense to you? 
Uh, it's one of the dumbest, most Orwellian things I have ever heard any government official say in my lifetime. If the North Koreans said we're doing de-escalation through escalation, we'd make fun of it for the rest of time. Uh, and we should in this case as well. What that means is, thank you very much, we appreciate you admitting that you are starting the war. Because that's an Israeli official saying, yes, we're doing escalation. But that will lead to de-escalation. I don't know how much he laughed afterwards. Uh, and I don't know how much he laughed after seeing the 35 children dead and uh, over 400 people slaughtered as usual by Israel. Uh, so of course, the Israelis have their usual standard excuses. Oh, They've been firing rockets for 11 months. Um, how many of them landed? One. Um, and look, there might have been land to some that landed and caused minor injuries, but overall, they are enormously ineffectual. So, okay, but if they, oh my God, you were so concerned as you had to go to war to prevent it, why didn't you do 11 months ago, 10 months ago, nine months ago? No, you chose to escalate and your official just admitted it. And there's no question about it. A little bit later in the program, we're gonna do another story about a former CIA director and Secretary of Defense, Leon Panetta. As establishment as it gets, saying Israel is doing the terrorism. That is an astounding thing for a US official to say, and I think he speaks for a lot more people. Hang around for that story as well. But now let me give you more from the American officials so you understand uh, what they actually think. So uh, Jordan read you the statement about, uh, we technically agree with Israel's rationale. <laughs> Do we really have to say this? They say, you know, as the People that are in charge, the politicians go, yes, the clear check cleared from APAC. Say it, say you agree with Israel. Yes, sorry, yes, uh, we agree with Israel. That's why they send people like Leon Panetta, who's not in the government anymore, to say, of course Israel's the one starting the war. But here you can see it clearly in their own statements that they put out because they can't help it because it's so obvious that Israel is starting this giant war in the Middle East and they want us to fight it. So um, here's a US official quoted by Axios. One of the key messages that we wanna keep a path to open to a diplomatic resolution and therefore don't want the Israelis to take steps that will close such a path. In other words, they're closing the path to peace by bombing the hell out of Lebanon. Okay, if you're not clear enough, uh, more from Axios. The US made clear to Israel that such a war wouldn't help Israel achieve its goal of returning tens of thousands of displaced Israelis to their homes on the border with Lebanon. So which one is it? Do you agree with their insane, ludicrous, humiliating uh, rationale of de-escalation through escalation? You think that rationale is good? Or do you say that it would not achieve their goals? It's obvious that offic officially we agree with Israel because we are not allowed to disagree with Israel. But unofficially, the minute you ask him any question, they're like, of course it's Israel, are you guys nuts? And Hezbollah's been doing the same ineffectual bombing for the last 11 months, and now Israel's obliterating them. They're in basically invading Lebanon. But they, Lebanon's not their main target, guys, Iran is. And but Iran is a giant war, Israel cannot fight by itself. That's why they, make, they want us to do it. And conveniently, our corrupt politicians have brought a giant part of our fleet right next to Iran so that Hezbollah or Hamas or the Houthis or Iran can bomb one of our ships, kill a bunch of our service members so we can say, oh, that's it, we have to do it. Oh, come on, obliterate Iran, everybody pay for it. Give, it, give us another trillion dollars. Give it over, okay, that's what they're gonna do. Here I got more quotes from US officials. They say that um, they're tr focused on reaching, I'm quoting Axios again, focused on reaching an understanding with Israeli leaders about the escalation dial. You get it? So they're like, we have to say that they are terrorists, they're, they're right, and the other guys are the bad guy terrorists, but there's an escalation dial and it's been turned up to 11 by Israel. That's why we're talking to their leaders. Will you stop attacking every goddamn neighbor? And Israel goes, yeah, what are you gonna do about it? Send me another check? Yeah, dumbass, go home. I'll give you your next order, okay, when it's time. So it's, if you start a check, okay? It's, Remember, because we normally give Israel $4 billion a year, but when they slaughtered 40,000 Palestinians in Gaza and obliterated the entire place, we said $4 billion. No, this time we're gonna send you $26 billion. That's US politicians saying, nice job, way to murder all those Palestinians. Oh my God, we're gonna send you so much more money. 
Now imagine how much money we're going to send them when they start slaughtering that level of people in Lebanon, let alone a much larger number in Iran. Is it going to be contained at 26? No, the next one will probably be 260 billion dollars. And I'm not at all exaggerating, that is a massive understatement because in Iraq and Afghanistan, we spent over at, at least at a bare minimum two trillion dollars. Iran is four times the size of Iraq. One last one, McGurk, one of the top US officials here who has to every once in a while go and humiliate himself publicly and go, Israel is right, attacking all your neighbors is de-escalation. Can I please leave? This is every one of the US officials now looks like a hostage video when they're when they were doing their press conferences. But he said, quote, we have disagreements with the Israelis on tactics and how you measure escalation risk. It is a very concerning situation. Combined with Panetta's comments, it is inescapable. American officials are saying we're not allowed to disagree publicly. But they're starting the war and they're going to make us fight it. And there's no question about it. The only people left are like the Israeli zealots. Like, no, nope, everything Israel does is great. Of course, America should pay for it and should fight his, their wars for them. Oh, if it's special ally, moral army. Oh, we just killed another 400 some odd people, another 35 children. If Hezbollah kills 35 children, by the way, they, uh, Hamas killed 34 on October 7th. And in return, 40,000, 41,000 Palestinians killed, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, for 34 kids. October 7th, 34 poor Israeli kids slaughtered by Hamas. Hate it, can't stand it, awful, right? 34, 35 killed just, just today in Lebanon. America doesn't care. The world cares, but there's nothing you can do. And America goes, you need another check? You need another check? Okay, I know we know you're starting it. We know you're the one escalating, but no, okay, yeah, whatever you need, sir, sir. The corruption in America is the cancer of the world. It, it forces us to let the oil companies do as much destruction to this planet as possible. Drug companies literally kill Americans, 68,000 Americans, health insurance companies and drug companies, because we're the only civilized, only developed nation that doesn't have universal health care. We just let people die in order for donors to make more money. And now Israel says, you are to let me kill as many human beings as possible, start as many wars as possible, and you're to shut up about it and send me more money. And right now, that's what we're doing. If you don't realize that's what's happening, you're just ignorant and, and you will be, you will pay for this war. There's no question about it. They will take a giant number out of your check and go, no, 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 that's not going to help you with your wages. It's not going to help your kids uh, or get food. It's not going to help you with anything. That's set aside for Israel to start more wars in the Middle East. 100% reality. Jordan. It's always interesting to see Netanyahu post these videos and release these statements in English because he's also, he's not just speaking to people who speak English in Israel, he's speaking to people in Congress who are going to do his bidding. So it's always fascinating to see him release a video in English. And in this case, we have an example of what this type of language leads to. Just, there's so many parallels. We're almost at the one year mark of October 7th. And you see the same language, the same the same deceitful tactics to justify a bombing campaign, a barbaric bombing campaign. It's the same things. Human shields, they're hiding weapons in your home. Please evacuate the area. This isn't against civilians. And already we're seeing a civilian death toll. Day one. So the opportunity, if US officials and the Biden administration cared would be, would be to stop it now. Use the leverage you know you have, stop it now. Biden and his team over the past 72 hours talked to media about how his number one priority in his remaining days in office is to guarantee a ceasefire. How is this going to help? How is allowing this to continue, continue to send weapons, aid, munitions, whatever Netanyahu wants, do not use an ounce of leverage that you have over him. How is that in line with your number one priority? We've seen these types of comments from him and his administration for almost a year now. And what has that amounted to? And they're moving to Lebanon in part because they run out of things to bomb in Gaza. That's why they expanded their campaign to a much larger extent in the West Bank, it's about a few things. 
expanding their control in that region and their influence in that region, but also preserving Netanyahu's position as prime minister. The longer a war rages, the longer he's insulated from outside threats. It keeps his coalition together, keeps his government together. He's not subject to a, an ouster from his position or his government falling apart. So people have to die because of his thirst for power. Yeah, so a couple of other clarifying things here. So to Jordan's point, if this was Biden's top priority to stop the war, well, he didn't. So Joe Biden, by his own admission then, is a historic failure, total, utter failure. And it's this is not complicated, guys. If you wanna stop the war, you use your leverage. Whatever the leverage might happen to be in any negotiation, what's our leverage here? This is also obvious, the 26 billion we're sending. If you say, hey, if you do the thing that I don't want you to do, which is escalation, which every official, as I just read you, is making clear, yeah, Israel's escalating. If you do that, I will not send you the money. It is the least complicated thing on earth. And why is he not using his leverage? Also, not at all complicated. If you're like still in la la land because you watch MSNBC and you're like, well, he's such a great, empathetic, sweet man. And he just a natural Zionist, and he just believes that Israel should be able to invade and attack and occupy millions of people anytime that he wants, because he's such a gunk. Allergy comes from right here, Zionism, okay? No, it comes from over $11 million in checks. Honestly, if you don't understand that, you're kind of an idiot. And if, you, if you're national media and you just took that personally, good, I meant it personally. How dumb can you be that you never write in articles why Joe Biden will not use his leverage to get to his number one priority? That never occurred to you? It's never been in a single article in mainstream media. It never occurred to you that it might be the $11 million or the $5 million they gave to Kamala Harris or the $100 million they're spending on this cycle? You're like, well, I don't, what do you say? Let's have a debate. Is it that he loves Zionism or is that he loves exploding pagers? Why do you think they're doing it? Somebody says, could it be the money, the $100 million they're spending in this election? Get out of here, you radical. We found an anti Semite. We found an anti Semite. Come on. The, the, if they really believe this, every reporter in Washington is at the very bottom. It's like the 1% on IQ scale. Dumbest people in the whole country. I challenge you, I, ch I challenge any reporter in Washington DC, have a debate with me and prove to me that the politicians don't care about the hundreds of millions of dollars that APAC is giving them. That's just so irrelevant to them. They're just all natural born Zionists. God, you sound so unbelievably stupid. Okay, yeah, now I've said my piece on that. Last things here, uh, guys, the second reason why the pager explosions, as I told you, was that's uh, that's as soon as that happened, I came on here and said we're going to war. That's Israel's declaration of war. And then what followed afterwards? Uh, the leader of Hezbollah comes out and goes, "That was quote an unprecedented and historic attack. It crosses all red lines, and we'll be going to war." That was their intent. That is exactly what wound up have being the reaction of Hezbollah. And every security expert that the U.S. had says, "Well, now and I." Read you the quotes from CNN and all the other sources that say, yes, now Hezbollah and Iran will have no choice but to retaliate. Otherwise, they're humiliated for to their domestic audience, cannot retain power, et cetera. Besides which, what, what do you, if somebody slaps you across the face, what, 10 times, a thousand times, what do you think a normal human being is going to do? I know they're allowed to, Israel's allowed to kill. 460 people in Lebanon, 35 children, they're, because they're the moral army. But of course, if a Hezbollah fires back, terrorist, why? They're Muslims, Muslims are always terrorists, and Israel's always the moral ones. It doesn't matter that Israel kills on a scale so much greater than any of their Muslim enemies, like 40 times Hamas. And the, the, the people in media here, again, either the dumbest people on the entire planet or the most biased go, Oh, Israel has killed 40 times the civilians of Hamas. That is why Hamas is terrorist and Israel is the moral army. I mean, we're so sick of these lies. Last thing, guys. What Israel, speaking of lies, I saw it on the Piers Morgan show. I was kind of surprised by it when I heard an Israeli official making this point. And now they're doing it over and over again. And I realized that was the, the beginning of this propaganda campaign. They're trying to decouple Hezbollah and Hamas and Gaza. Wait a minute, I thought you guys all were saying they were all funded by Iran, they're all connected. And they said, no, 
Hezbollah is not firing the rockets because of the occupation and to uh, support uh, Gaza and to get Israel to stop bombing Gaza. Hezbollah just hates Jews for no reason at all, not connected to the fact that there's a five and a half million people imprisoned in open camps by the Israelis. And not because Israel just destroyed 70% of the buildings in Gaza and displaced 95% of the people there. Not because of that. No, Hezbollah is just doing it randomly because they're raging anti Semites. And that's why we're allowed to kill and murder all of them. And we're the moral army and they're the terrorists. Okay, if you believe that, you're again either enormously biased or you work in mainstream media and you're dumb as a rock. You're watching footage of Lebanese journalist Fadi Badua getting hit by an IDF bomb while conducting a live broadcast in Baalbek, Lebanon. Now seconds after he set up his camera, as you can see from the video, uh, this is in his home setting up his camera and then immediately afterwards a bomb is detonated just outside of his window, uh, sending shards of glass to his head. Luckily, it appears he survived uh, this attack, but there have been countless stories of journalists both in the Gaza Strip, in Lebanon, also in the West Bank, by the way, uh, who have been hit by bombs, uh, you know, sent by Israel. So at least 116 journalists and media workers have been killed since the beginning of Israel's war in Gaza last year, according to the Committee to Protect Journalists. And I should also note that Israel decided to raid the Al Jazeera offices in the West Bank. No reason for the raid other than the fact that they continue to report on what's happening with this war, something that Israel seems to have a problem with. Um, but there's also more escalation in Lebanon, which I wanna get to in just a moment, but I wanna give you a chance to weigh in first, Cenk. Yeah, so look, I think that um, a lot of times Palestinian and now Lebanese lives are devalued. So I was on a, a TV debate last night uh, where I, you know, pointed out that 12 people killed by a Hezbollah strike in northern Israel was terrible. The anchor agreed it was terrorism and I asked him about the 35 kids that were killed in the recent bombing raid that Israel did yesterday. And he said, "Oh, numbers don't mean anything. Uh, as long as they're, you know, look, I, I don't like bringing up identity. It's not a pleasant thing, I hate tribalism. But if we're being honest, in, in America and in Israel, as long as it's a Muslim life, they don't really care. No, Jake, you're not bringing up identity. <laughs> He's the one bringing up identity. When he says numbers don't matter, okay, then what does matter? If the numbers of dead bodies of civilians doesn't matter, then what does matter? Well, that gets to the hilarious absurdity. But again, the people, the supporters of Israel actually believe this, which is more amazing. And you know this through American politics because MAGA actually believes that Donald Trump won the election, etc. Right? And Blue MAGA actually thought Joe Biden was young and dynamic. Right? So we all know that absurdities can be believed. But in their minds, they believe intent is what matters. And Israel accidentally killed over thirty thousand civilians in Gaza and accidentally kill those 35 children, that when they drop a bomb in the middle of a city, no one could have expected that 35 kids would be killed. Oh, Golly gee, they were, I, I, well, there it is, yet another accident. But they, they believe it with all their hearts that every time Israel kills, and including 30, 40 times more than Hamas and Hezbollah, they think it's all an accident, it was all done with great intent, but when Hamas or Hezbollah or any Palestinian or any Muslim that kills an Israeli, it is done with great evil in their heart. And hence, they are evil, and even though Israel kills 40 times as much, they are moral and decent. So that is their genuine belief, even though the rest of us look at them like, are you on this planet? Right, I mean, when investigations, including an investigation by CNN of all places, concludes that IDF soldiers, IDF snipers intentionally shot and killed Al Jazeera journalist Abu Akleh. This is even before the current war. How do they deal with that fact? And how does that work out with their worldview that everything Israel does is an accident? Yeah, and so in that, it, there is no, there is nothing as, that Israel can do that's too heinous. Because by definition, they're the moral army, right? And by definition, Muslims are evil. So when Saudi Arabia chops up an American journalist, we all condemn it at the top of our lungs, 10 out of 10 condemnation. And Israel joins us. Can you believe that the Saudis would do this? Now, Israel has assassinated two Muslim American journalists, not just Abu Akhli, but recently one in the West Bank. Right. And 
sniper shots from hundreds of yards away after any conflict is done, well after the conflict is over, in a secluded area, snipers, headshots, kill them, murder them. Israeli supporters believe with all their hearts, accident. They must have confused them with a, a protester, even though Shirin Abu Akhbar is one of the most famous journalists in the Middle East. And she was wearing a vest that, that said, said press, press on it. <laughs> and they knew that she was there, right. etc. But no, no, by definition, it doesn't matter how clearly murder it is and how overwhelming the numbers are. And in this case, our former CIA director and defense secretary, Leon Panetta, almost every expert is saying, Israel is doing the escalation. They're the ones starting this war with Lebanon. And in fact, then Israel comes out with the most hilarious, and I love John Stewart for lampooning this the other day. One of the most legendary excuses of all time, that they were doing de-escalation through escalation. And so that's when you know which side is lying. The guy saying that they're doing de-escalation de through escalation, as Stewart of course pointed out, and so did we earlier. That's just called war, okay? So yeah. Israel has started the war. They basically confessed to it through that absurdity that they put out there. Mm -hmm. And that's because they want to protect Netanyahu's career. We all know this. Anything else is just one side being so biased they can't see straight. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, war is peace, uh, which is, of course, an Orwellian thing to think. Uh, but let's give you an update on what's currently transpiring in Lebanon. So more than 500 people were killed in Lebanon in what was the deadliest day for the country since 2006. That was uh, the last time there was a war uh, between Israel and Hezbollah. Now 35 children and 58 women were among those killed in the bombing campaign. And Israel plans to continue its intense bombing campaign, which is eerily similar to what the IDF carried out in Gaza. In fact, a lot of the talking points that you hear from Israeli officials uh, is similar to what they were saying about their military activity in Gaza. Now on Tuesday, meaning today, the Israeli military also carried out an airstrike in the southern suburbs of Beirut, the capital of Lebanon. And this is its fourth direct strike on the capital in nearly a year of conflict. And a day earlier on Monday, as was reported here at TYT, women, children and medics were among those killed and wounded, Lebanon's health ministry said Monday. It is unclear how many of the casualties were civilians or Hezbollah militants, but many of the locations described by Israel as Hezbollah targets are also residential neighborhoods and villages. And I wanna just show you the extent to which this bombing campaign took place in Lebanon. If you look at this map that was put together by CNN, it shows you the airstrikes that were conducted on Monday of this week. And it gives you a sense of just how widespread the bombardments were. It wasn't just you know concentrated in one part of the country. You see it kind of scattered throughout the country, including with the border or near the border with Israel. Now, uh, later Tuesday, Hezbollah said that it had fired rockets at the northern city of Kiryat Shmona. The Israeli military said it intercepted most of the 50 projectiles, but that some had damaged buildings in the area. Israeli police said the attack caused several fires, but no injuries. Around 100 projectiles had been fired toward Israel on Tuesday. An Israeli Defense Forces spokesperson told CNN. Now, I give you those details because it's really important to understand the asymmetrical nature of this war. Because if you look at the corporate media's reporting of the, you know, tit for tat exchanges between Israel and Hezbollah, you would think that everything is about equal. But let's keep it real. Israel is backed by a military superpower, the military superpower on the global stage, and that's the United States. Their military capabilities, both defensively and offensively, very different from what Hamas has, and certainly very different from what Hezbollah has. And you will see that you know, play out in the number of strikes. So let's take a look at this graph that was put together by the BBC. Um, and it uses data that was compiled by the Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project. It shows you the uh, various, you know, strikes that have been taking place from October 7th. Uh, through June 30th of 2024. And the red bars identify the Israeli strikes, 
whereas the blue bars represent the Hezbollah strikes. And you can see that the Israeli strikes far outnumber the Hezbollah strikes. So referring to this as a tit for tat is ridiculous when you can see that most of these strikes and most of them are effective, meaning people are getting killed, are being carried out by the IDF. Yeah, so first on that stat, I wanted to just double down on that. Uh, so that's the number of strikes. It's already massively disproportionate Israel doing more strikes. But remember, every one of those lands and kills a lot of people. Exactly. Uh, almost none of Hezbollah's land. Israel's the only country in the world with a defense shield, so it's nearly impenetrable. Of course, Lebanon has no defense shield. Uh, and why? America paid for Israel's defense shield. Great. Did we pay for other people's defense shield? No, they're to be murdered at uh, will and with no recourse. So in the old days, war was terrible for both sides. Now war is only terrible for Israel's neighbors. So Israel thinks it's invincible, it's above the law, it could just kill with impunity. And they will have American anchors and politicians go out and go, Israel is our special ally. And of course, they'll use the propaganda like human shields. When Israel or their supporters say the word human shields, everybody run, because that means they're about to kill a ton of innocent civilians and use the excuse of, Oh, they were hiding behind my bomb that I put on their head. Oh, look at that. Oh, a bomb in the middle of a busy city killed 35 children and 58 women. Oh, golly gee, that was another accident. Those giant number of strikes that Anna just showed you in that graph. Oh, that was also an accident. The number of journalists killed by Israel is in this conflict is greater than all other conflicts in the world combined. It was an accident. When the Muslims kill a journalist, it is on purpose. When Israel kills more journalists than every other nation on earth, it was an accident. Oh, Did we eliminate the ability for the rest of the world to find out the heinous, awful war crimes we're doing? Golly gee, it was an accident. Mm -hmm. I bet those journalists were hiding behind human shields. No, they're innocent civilians, if you say so, but they seem to be reporting things we don't like, so we killed them. I mean. I mean, yet another accident, by the way, of course, they've also killed more human rights workers than any other conflict in the world. Yes, All exactly. of these are, again, guys, I say it in a mocking way because- It's ridiculous. I have to snap them out of their hypnosis. Like, for, for the rest of you, you totally get it. Nobody thinks it's uh, this idea of human shields excuses butchering 41,000 people, 25,000 women and children. Nobody in their right mind thinks that. That's why I don't believe them. I don't believe that they actually, Believe what they're saying. I think they do. The, the human mind is ability to trick itself is amazing. It's one of the most amazing things in the history of the world. So that Israel can be Goliath and actually think that they're David. The Palestinians are literally have slingshots with with stones like David, and and the Israel has nukes. <laughs> Yet they think they're David, and that the Palestinians with no power at all is Goliath. That's how deluded. Israel is. Final thing I want to mention about how Israel is carrying out this war in Lebanon is, look, we've seen similar allegations about the use of chemical weapons against Palestinians. Now we're hearing similar things out of Lebanon. So the international campaign group, Human Rights Watch, has verified the use of white phosphorus over several populated areas in southern Lebanon, including Al Bustan. It says Israel's use of white phosphorus is unlawfully indiscriminate in populated areas. Now, I remember the way the international community and the United States reacted to Syria's leader, Bashar al-Assad, using chemical weapons against his own people in his in in Syria. Apparently, the use of chemical weapons by some world leaders very naughty, unacceptable. The use of chemical weapons by the Israeli defense forces totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, look, if you say what Hamas, Hezbollah, and Assad have done is terrorism, I don't know how many times we have to agree. Yeah, killing innocent civilians, using chemical weapons, disastrous. But when you say the same exact things, by the way, times 40 done by Israel is not terrorism. Again, you look absurd. Maybe in your own mind, what do you mean? I can't be a terrorist, I'm Israeli. I can kill anyone I like because I'm Israeli and by definition moral. No, I got really bad news for you. That isn't how it works. The rest of the world can see it clearly. You guys, Israel is the aggressors. They've killed so many more people than the so-called terrorists. And I say so-called because terrorism doesn't mean anything anymore. Because when you say it only applies to Muslims but never applies to Israelis, then the word has no meaning at all. 
okay? So either Israeli is a disastrous, dangerous terrorist state because it has killed and butchered so many more civilians and done all the other abuses, throwing people off of rooftops now, uh, sexual abuse, rape, uh, starvation, etc. They've done every abuse, every war crime in the book. And if you say that doesn't count, well, okay, then you, it's impossible to have a conversation with someone that deeply irrational. But no matter what you believe, the rest of the world can see the atrocities that Israel is doing. And it does not help Israel. It is a disastrous idea for Israel. And one last thing, this, and they won't believe it, but I see the right wing in this country turning against Israel. Yeah, of course. I have never seen that before in my lifetime. This is the first time I'm ever seeing it. And the right wing is starting to go, now wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, I don't really much care about Muslims, but why are we spending our money for this? Well, when look, when you have a significant faction within the Republican voting base declaring themselves America first, they're not joking around about that. Yeah, the politicians are full of crap. Every Republican says, a politician says, Israel first, America 87th, mm -hmm. right? But the good news about MAGA and the Republican electorate, there's plenty of bad news, but the good news is, they're not here to take talking points from greasy corporate politicians. True. They'll take it for Trump, and it drives me crazy that they take it from Trump, and Trump says worse. But if Marco Rubio or Mitch McConnell or these greasy politicians go, oh, now let me tell you something, okay? America first means we give Israel $26 billion and we give you nothing and you shut up about it. And, you, <laughs> and some of you uh, lose family members or risk your own lives by being deployed to the Middle East as a result of these escalations. Those same Republican senators we reported yesterday on the show are trying to take away the the one decent thing Biden did of lowering drug prices on just 10 drugs. And the Republicans are like, how dare you, Americans need to pay more. That is my donor, big pharma, I love those guys. How dare you try to pay less for your drugs. You have to pay whatever the drug companies say and you have to do what Israel says. You try that one too many times and you're gonna awaken a dragon that you can't control, that none of us can control. So cut it out before it, destroys Israel along with the rest of the Middle East. Israel has now officially rejected a US backed 21 day ceasefire with Lebanon, which uh, the leader of Hezbollah, by the way, Hassan Nasrallah had accepted even without a ceasefire in Gaza. Remember the reason why Hezbollah has been attacking Israel is due to the fact that Israel is raining terror on Palestinians in Gaza. They wanted a ceasefire in Gaza and would not stop. Uh, trying to strike Israel until they, you know, agreed to a ceasefire. Now, with Israel uh, planning a ground invasion in Lebanon, uh, you know, you have the United States and its Western allies trying to encourage Israel to sign a ceasefire deal with Lebanon. I, I'm sorry, with Israel in regard to Hezbollah in Lebanon, but. Uh, Netanyahu's not buying it. So now Israel is continuing to bomb the capital of Lebanon, Beirut. More than 600 people in Lebanon have been killed by Israel since Monday. And half a million people in Lebanon have been displaced as a result of this fighting. Now an Israeli warplane struck the edges of the capital Beirut, killing two people and wounding 15, including a woman in critical condition. Lebanon's health ministry said, now that took deaths from hits overnight and during Thursday to 28. So now every day you're hearing about, you know, a, a dozens of casualties and as we know, earlier this week you literally had uh, the single most deadly day in Lebanon since the previous war between Lebanon and Israel. Uh, and on that day there were uh, about 500 people who were killed. So this is just devastating news. The Lebanese health ministry said most victims on Thursday were Syrians killed in the town of Yunnan and the, or in the Beka Valley. Uh, Lebanon is home to around 1.5 million Syrians who fled civil war there and now they're being greeted with more war in Lebanon. So America just uh, sent Israel $8.7 billion. Um, and uh, Israel just rejected our ceasefire uh, requests. Um, those two things are not disconnected. They are 100% connected. So Biden says, please uh, do a ceasefire, stop attacking Lebanon, stop attacking Gaza. By the way, Here's $8.7 billion because I think you're doing a fantastic job of attacking Gaza and Lebanon. Now, nobody, I, I, nobody's ever given me any amount of money and said, this is because I don't like what you're doing. 
let alone $8.7 billion. So that's Biden talking out of both sides of his mouth. So when the Israelis publicly humiliate us for the you know 12th time, 88th time, uh, 128th, it doesn't matter. Uh, Netanyahu comes out and goes, oh, America wanted a ceasefire. No. Why? He just got an $8.7 billion check telling him yes. Yeah, I would prefer if Biden were just honest with what he genuinely believes. So at least he can save himself and the country the embarrassment that we're currently undergoing. Because Biden is not against what Israel's doing. If Biden were genuinely against it, he would hold back the military funding and the weaponry. He is not doing that because he is supportive of what Israel is doing. So. Biden is essentially calling for a broader regional war in the Middle East. And by the way, don't take this story as an isolated incident to make all of your judgments on. Take a step back and look at the broader picture. Because not only have we approved the military funding and continue to funnel the weapons to Israel, but remember, I mean, there's just, there has been no indication really in terms of the actions of the Biden administration to show that they want to rein Israel in. Again and again, they say Israel has a right to defend itself. In no way will we uh, hinder their ability to uh, defend themselves. And that means continue to send them the weapons. Even now, Lloyd Austin said, we're gonna keep sending them the weapons. Yeah, so look, the, the reason I come back to the mainstream media so often is because if people don't have the right information, they can't make the right decisions in a democracy. So mainstream media, uh, has said in every single article, now thousands upon thousands of times, and in every segment on television, that Joe Biden, Anthony Blinken, John Kirby, etc., uh, they really want a ceasefire, and they're working uh, day in day out for a ceasefire, and they care so much about the Palestinian people and so much about peace. Never do they put the caveat of they just at the same time put it sent them an 8.7 billion dollar check. There's a $26 billion package, etc. If you're a real reporter, wouldn't you say, hey, Biden says this, but he does the exact opposite? Mm -hmm. None of them mention that he's doing the exact opposite. That is a weird group think for all of mainstream media to go, oh, golly gee, I don't know why Netanyahu keeps saying no when poor Biden is trying so hard. But you don't know that money is the thing that makes a difference, especially billions of dollars. You like really isn't that like humiliating if you're a mainstream media reporter and that never occurred to you and you never put it in a single story about whether Joe Biden is actually trying hard for a ceasefire or he isn't? Did you ever consider that he might be lying? You never even considered that, did you? That's unbelievable. Right now, the Biden administration, in my view, is doing what they can to manufacture consent for a hot war with Iran. Now, why do I think that? Well, think about all the propaganda that we've heard from members of the Biden administration in regard to Iran. So you had Avril Haines, who's part of the State Department, allege, you know, that Iran is meddling in our elections, and Iran is, you know, funding the college protesters. Uh, allegations that Iran is behind assassination attempts against Trump. Has anyone presented any evidence for this? Or are Zero. we just supposed to believe it? Believe them at face value? Okay. Uh, there is a story uh, involving J.D. Vance's uh, dossier, right? That got leaked. Everyone is saying that it was uh, leaked by Iran. What is the evidence behind that? What is the evidence? Seriously, I want yeah, to know. No, look, I, is it plausible? It's plausible. Of course, it's plausible. Right. So it's not like we're saying, oh, that's impossible, and it did blah blah blah. But if you say, I'm never going to show you the evidence, trust me that Iran is trying to do all these nefarious things, right? As Israel wants us to help them attack Iran. And I'm not going to give you any evidence. And I'm a proven liar because I've told you a hundred times that I'm working towards a ceasefire while secretly funding, not secretly, it's secret only because mainstream media reporters refuse to tell you the obvious fact, while openly funding the genocide in Gaza, the attacks against Lebanon, and sending one thank you note and a giant check after another to Netanyahu. So these are the liars pretending to be for peace who are actually paying for the war. Yep. So when you tell me that that war you obviously love and are trying to promote is by Iran, and then you tell me that you have all the secret evidence that you're never gonna share that Iran is doing X, Y, Z, you'll forgive me if I don't believe you because you've proven what a gigantic liar you are over and over again for the last 11, 12 months here. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the 
impending ground invasion that the IDF is planning and how the Biden administration is allegedly divided on it. Okay, so look, IDF reservists are also being called to active duty as Israel prepares for a ground invasion into Lebanon, which sounds like it's gonna be disastrous, right? I mean, it just continues to escalate. And while Iran has kind of stayed back so far and kind of said over and over again that they do not want to engage in war with Israel or the United States, we are headed in that direction. As long as you know the Benjamin Netanyahu regime in, in Israel decides that they wanna keep going, they're gonna keep going. And if no one stops them, this is just gonna keep escalating. Now, according to the Washington Post, there are some divisions within the Biden administration. And I think that's also possible, but I'm also not buying that the majority of the Biden administration is against what Israel is doing right now. So let's get to some of these details. So for instance, you have some of the anonymous State Department officials telling the Washington Post things like, I can't recall, at least in recent memory, a period in which an escalation or intensification led to a fundamental de-escalation and led to profound stabilization of the situation. So that State Department official is essentially saying that Israel's talking point about how they're escalating this in order to finally arrive at peace, it's just not buying it, total BS. Of course, no one that has more than two brain cells believes that you get to de-escalation through escalation. <laughs> right. You would have to be maniacally stupid to believe that. Yes, uh, another senior official uh, told the Washington Post that the US policy of military support to Israel uh, should not be considered a blank check. Uh, it's quote, definitely a blank check. I mean, check. it is, it is, it's so obvious it is. But this is what the State Department official says, this is a senior defense official. As we've said to them, it's not unconditional. You cannot open a new front, meaning war with Lebanon, and there are no consequences. And that's not, in fact, the fastest way to return your citizens to the northern border. And you know that is the argument that Israel is using. We're doing this because we want the 70,000 or so Israelis who live near the border with Lebanon to be able to return to their homes. I, I agree that, I, I agree with this individual. I'm skeptical that this is the right way to get to that. Yeah, they, look, there's two uh, different types of people inside the government and that part is real uh, and earnest. So one is uh, lifelong bureaucrats whose job is, uh, you know, being an expert on these policy matters. And those folks are not paid well, they're not part of any kind of you know, donor class or anything like that. They're just going like, this is crazy. No one's ever heard of de-escalation through escalation. That's just the most maniacal thing. That's what you say when you know that you're above the law and you wanna rub it in people's face. Go, yeah, it's an Orwellian thing I'm saying. Ha ha, it's almost like a way of, showing dominance, there is no, nothing I can say to you where it's a big enough lie that the Americans will oppose it. By the way, I just want you to all remember, okay, that Hassan Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah, agreed to the ceasefire deal, the US backed ceasefire deal, even without a ceasefire in Gaza. Wouldn't that allow for Israeli citizens to return to their homes because there's a ceasefire in place and yeah, they don't no. have to worry about Hezbollah? Seems like Netanyahu doesn't actually care about the Israelis being able to go back to their homes. Yeah, look, guys, look at real reporting. Every real reporter uh, explains, and here I'll give even some of the mainstream media reporters credit in Washington Post, New York Times, etc., that it's constantly Israel rejecting the ceasefires. So Hamas agreed to a ceasefire all the way back on July 2nd based on Israel's original proposal. Then Israel said, "Oh, you accepted? Now we're changing our proposal. So Hezbollah accepts the ceasefire in Lebanon, they don't care. Israel's the one not accepting the ceasefire. If you're here otherwise, honestly, go dig further, you will see the actual news and it comes even out of Israel, right? And so, and know that whoever told you that Biden wants a ceasefire or the Netanyahu and Israel are the victims here and that you know, it's the Hezbollah terrorists that rejected the ceasefire and not Israel. They're literally lying to you. It's not even close. Yeah. So now yeah. finally, uh, let's get to some of the individuals in the Biden administration who are kind of behind Israel. And I think that's the majority of them, to be honest. So uh, Matthew Levitt, who's an expert on Hezbollah uh, at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy and a former counterterrorism official, uh, told the Post that other administration officials are cautiously supportive of the strategy to de-escalate by 
putting pressure on Hezbollah, meaning de-escalate by escalating, which makes no sense. Uh, they are vigorously pursuing a diplomatic effort, but the leverage for it has been the Israeli escalation. Yeah, Matthew Levitt's a liar. Yeah, that makes no Israel sense. Israel has not aggressively pursued any ceasefire deal. In fact, they have publicly rejected every ceasefire deal, including the last one proposed. Matthew Levitt is not stupid enough, no human being is stupid enough to believe that, oh, if you just keep attacking and killing members of Hezbollah and keep attacking Iran and attacking, 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 and then getting your ground troops ready, that Hezbollah and whoever it is, fill in the blank, whoever the, your opponent is, is gonna go, Oh, we surrender to the mighty Israel. We fall humiliated in your honor and your grace, and we accept, and we please, we beg for your mercy. That's not a thing. Of course, they're gonna counterattack. There is, that's not, like, please, really, Matthew Levitt, are you embarrassing yourself like that? Pretending that that's a thing that happens in this world where they just fall down and, and just surrender instantly? And no, of course not, they're gonna fight back. The war's gonna get way, way worse. Look guys, here's the giant thing we do not know. What is Hezbollah and Iran's actual capabilities? Mm. Because if it turns out their capabilities are what they've done so far, no, Israel's gonna get to humiliate them and slaughter them and they'll destroy Lebanon and, and there'll be no fight back just like in Gaza. And then America will declare that the dirty Muslims were at fault and Israel had a right to defend itself. Maybe it'll just take Lebanon as it did with the occupied territories. I don't know how much land they're gonna grab in the Middle East, etc. And so uh, that that's the situation we're headed towards and so, uh, if we keep sending them checks, that's what they're gonna do. There's no question about it. There's no one that could tell you, oh yeah, poor, poor, poor Israel. They had to attack every one of their neighbors, hit all of their capitals, kill hundreds of people there over and over again. Because golly gee, there was no other solution. If you want, if Israel wants peace, it's super easy. Ceasefire with Hezbollah, ceasefire with Hamas, do a two state solution. And you actually have a safe haven for Jews, which is what Israel was intended, but right now, they're not going in that direction at all. They're grabbing no. more land in the West Bank. They are demanding a further occupation of Gaza. Yeah, they're putting Israelis in more danger. They're putting, so again, to finish the thought, you're absolutely right, Anna. If it turns out though, that Hezbollah and Iran do have bigger capabilities as our officials keep warning us that they do, and they find a way around Israel's defenses, then it's gonna be the worst thing you've ever seen in your life. Because right now, over the last couple of days, 600 people were killed in Lebanon, but they're Muslim, so no one cares. Like literally, no one on earth cares, no one's gonna do anything. Israel's gonna get another big check for killing Muslims. But if Hezbollah can kill, kill, winds up killing 600 Israelis in a counter strike, that'll be considered the second October 7th. Mm -hmm. And that will, then Israel will get to bomb every country in the region, absolutely obliterate Lebanon. And we'll have to send not a $26 billion check, that was for Gaza, that was the easiest thing in the world. We'll have to send like a $260 billion check, et cetera. Because remember, Israeli lives are worth their weight in gold. It's the most precious thing on earth. Their Muslim lives around them are worthless, useless to Americans. Yeah, and look, I, it, it is true that the majority of casualties, civilian casualties have been and will continue to be Muslim civilians. Uh, but in Lebanon, you have a large Christian population, you have a large uh, Armenian population, Armenian diaspora who are also Christian. But it doesn't matter. None Nothing of these, matters. None of these people matter, okay? Civilian, doesn't matter. They're gonna keep carrying out this, this terror. When again, there's another option, but they just refuse to take it because right. Netanyahu wants to stay in power. Really, at the end of the day, that is the foundation of the decision making uh, taking place right now in the Israeli government. Yeah, last couple of things here. Look, it, you know, Anna mentioned that's a terror, and that's what Leon Panetta, former CIA director, former defense secretary, said the other day. Israel is doing the terrorism. That is unprecedented for an American official like that to say something like that. And they, they, he's saying they've got to stop, but they're not going to stop. And so now that brings me to one last thing was from one of our members from Twitch. It's funny handle skittle butt dragon rasp, but what I tell you guys all the time is our members are infinitely smarter than every reporter in the country, almost every reporter in the country. So look at this simple statement. If you really want a ceasefire, you stop giving them bullets and money to buy more. That's the most obvious thing in the world, yet not a single major reporter in the country has figured that out. Oh, You want a ceasefire, Oh, you would stop sending them money for bombs and bullets. Oh, I couldn't figure it out, 
I couldn't figure it out. I thought Joe Biden was being an honest, decent man who really wanted a ceasefire. Okay, so th that's where we are today. And at some point, if they figure out how to strike back, your all your money is going to go to that war. You're, for, there's already 40,000 US troops there waiting to get hit. There's no reason for them to be there other than to get hit, to be sitting ducks. We're gonna get dragged into this war. It is an absolute guarantee. The only way out of it is two years of massive frustration in America until things explode and we finally say enough with doing everything that Israel wants for no goddamn reason. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.